Streaming from drones, specifically live streaming from drones, has always been not very easy to set up, and frankly, it's not very clear, but with a few small tools, you can live stream your drone footage while it's happening right to Ecamm and then out to your audience. And I'm gonna show you how in this video today. Of course, the first question a lot of people are gonna ask is, well, why would I wanna do that? I just go fly around on my drone and then bring it back, download the video footage to my Mac or my whatever my content creation tool is. And then I just prepare it for a live stream in Ecamm after the fact. But what happens if you're trying to train in real time? I mean, one of the purposes of Ecamm is to be able to live stream. So let's say whether you have your audience on YouTube or your audience on Zoom, you wanna be able to demonstrate techniques. You know, it's kind of like going to a class. You wanna be able to do this in real time. So DJI makes it possible with a couple of their remotes. It's not necessarily from the drone itself, it's from the remote that is where you wanna be focusing your energy. And chances are you already have the tools that you need to make this happen available. If not, they're relatively cheap if you already own like a DJI drone like back there. And so first things first, you're gonna need a drone. I am going to be flying today the DJI Air 3. Now you can run off of the Mini 4 and anything that has HDMI out from the controller. So for instance, the DJI Air 3 and the Mini 4 both have the uh, RC2 controller and it has HDMI out via its USB-C port on the bottom of the remote. There are other ways to do it. I know that DJI has a remote pro that also outputs HDMI. So there's lots of ways to get it from the drone itself into Ecamm. You also need a cam link or some kind of video capture device from HDMI back to USB and then into your, you know, whatever you're capturing in. In most cases, it's going to be your Mac because that's what's running Ecamm. And then you set up just like you would any other cam link source as a camera inside of Ecamm. And then you have your camera, which is your video feed from the remote directly inside of your Mac. So cam link you're gonna need, you're gonna need a USB-C to HDMI adapter. I'm just running a dongle that I run off my laptop normally that has an HDMI output on it. And then you need the cam link then going back from a U because cam links are USB A, thank you. You have to go from USB A to USB C. And I have another dongle that actually converts the USB A back to USB C to plug in to the laptop. That may seem like a jumble mess, but it's really not. It's just a bunch of converters and plugs. It's just that you have to go through a few steps of converting the signal to get to your machine, whatever that may be. Now, ideally, you're using this on the road. If you have a laptop, you know, why would you do this live stream, for instance? Why would you why would you do it live? And as I mentioned before, you could be teaching techniques. You could be running a drone class, a live drone class, for instance, and be able to teach people specific techniques. And that could be part of the the courses you provide to people. It could also be just because you want, like, for instance, the new Avada just came out and it's got some really cool uh, aerobatics built into it. It'll do flips and all kinds of fun things. And maybe you want to demonstrate that. And maybe you have a, a camera on your hands on the controller. And then you have another camera, which is the feed from the drone itself directly into your Ecamm footage. So the easiest way to set it up is first connect everything. Make sure you have all your connections. So uh, I'll, I'll post what I have just keep in mind that most of the things with the exception of the cam link you could pretty much swap out so it, you could you could for instance you could find yourself an hdmi adapter usb-c to hdmi adapter those are all over the place and so those shouldn't be hard to find and if you already have usb-a on your laptop or on your desktop then you've eliminated another converter at that point so I'm just trying to go from USB-C to USB-C. That's, that's my challenge. But yours may be a little bit different. The point is you wanna get video out from the remote 
and then that video out goes into Camlink where it digitizes it and then that sends the digital signal into your computer and then after it's in the computer it shows up as a camera source and you can that's the process so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, hop outside with the drone and I'm going to record I'm actually gonna go live on my Facebook page and some poor unsuspecting souls that are just browsing on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> They're gonna be able to see me flying around live for the purposes of recording it for this demo. All right, let's go outside and take a look. And here I am, I've got the, um, the remote and down there you can't see just yet is my drone. So I'm gonna walk over a little bit, can't go too far and fire this guy up. All right, so I got it going. And let me switch over to... All right, so this is the drone feed. All right, that's... Yes, my driveway is <laughs> on that angle. So... And I'm obviously on the ground at the moment. So, let's go ahead and get up in the air. And you can see I'm gonna... You probably see it. There we go. And there it is, and it is currently reading at uh, 5.6 feet, about 4 feet from me. And now I'm just going to take it out to the street. You should be able to see this in your feed. All right, turn her around. I am. Howdy. All right. Let's take this bad boy vertical. I just saw a bird. Okay, so I am at currently 192 feet. Let's go further. Okay. So here I am. I'm at 400 feet. I uh, got my ISO. I'm plus two. So let me uh, drop that ISO down. There we go. You get a little bit. I got an ND filter on here. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll just rotate around. So this is, that's, that right there is downtown Bellevue, and then way off in the distance there is downtown Seattle. Let's go ahead and rotate around some more. And then what we're looking at here is Lake Washington. This is the lake that I kind of sort of live on. Not really. Up on the hill from it. But this this is a, a, a 400 foot view of what it looks like <laughs> uh, if I were to look out my studio window and go up 400 feet. So see it's a, it's a fairly nice day. Yesterday was a pretty crappy day. Um, so this is not too bad. So yeah, we're at uh, 391 feet, and yeah, it's uh, go ahead and record that. So I'll do I'll do a 360 again.
Now some of the choppiness I'm seeing in this video feed is probably my proximity to my vehicle. And it's probably interfering with the signal just a tad. You can see down at the bottom there is the little H. That's my home point, which means home is kind of directly beneath me. Now I can hit, tilt down. You can see there I am, way down there. And let me uh, see the ISO. I gotta bump that up a little bit. There we go. But there I am. There's a truck for, from 400 feet up. Pretty nifty, huh? So now what I'm doing is I'm essentially, you know, zipping around. Well, not zipping around. I'm just flying around right now because this is my first time doing this. So I'm not going to get too crazy. But it gives me an opportunity to, if I'm giving lessons or something like that, uh, in real time, if I've got people watching, I can do this and I can stream and they can see exactly what I'm seeing on my controller, which is pretty slick. Um, and of course, going through Facebook or YouTube through Ecamm makes it all possible. So this is, uh, you don't need RTMP setup or any of that other garbage. You just have to have a laptop running Ecamm and you're good to go. Get yourself a nice little battery uh, device that, you know, holds a charge. And uh, you could be anywhere and do this as long as you have a, at least a cellular signal. But Wi-Fi obviously is better. But I'm on cell right now. so. All right, well, let's take her down and uh, call it. So I'll start coming in. And let's just look down. Oh, for giggles, let's spin too. This will be the excitement for the day. So I'm down to 250 feet. And because of the GPS built into the drone, it pretty much holds its position, even if there's wind up there at 400 feet. I can hear her. I definitely can't see her. Looking right into the sunlight, though. This is where you stop. Oh, there you go. Okay. A little too fast. Well, it should be should come down roughly where I took it up in the air. Got pretty good precision on it, and it does. So let me. Uh, there I am. Here in. And it's landed. That's it. Pretty slick, huh? I thought so. So yeah, I mean that's that's the extent of it. Um, the Pocket Osmo DJI Air 3 running through. I'll, I'll post this setup in a bit as far as how I have it all going, but it works. Now, streaming from your drone is not the end of it. You can actually take the combination of what you just did in Ecamm and then combine that with the recorded footage on your drone and you already have your voiceover, you already have everything else. So you can now combine the two into a actual real presentation that is a full 4K image. So one of the things that is a challenge with the DJI remote is that it only outputs 1080p. And you're saying, well, in most cases, that's probably fine. That is probably fine, especially since you can also record in 4K directly on the drone. However, what you can't get rid of currently 
with DJI, and I can't wait till they update this. I know tons of people are screaming for it, is what's called clean HDMI output, meaning all of the heads up display graphics that are on the screen, you can't get rid of those right now. They are up there. So in many cases, what you can do is you can sync up your video that you took with Ecamm, and then you can now play back your recorded footage and it gets rid of the heads up display entirely. And you can actually do this through some special effects. You can bring it into your editing tool and actually blend between the two images. And I'll release a course on that. That's beyond the scope of this particular demonstration. But now that you've got the beginnings of it, you've got your content from Ecamm, you've live streamed it, and now you also have the content on the drone that you'll download to your machine. And then you can either pull it into Ecamm and use that as a presentation down the road or as reference material down the road, however you wanna do it. It's totally up to you, but you've got two copies now. You've got the one that was in Ecamm and then you also have the one that was recorded on the drone without the heads up display, which is kind of what you want. So that's it. I hope you uh, learned something a little bit from this. Uh, like I said, there are plenty of ways you can take this now at this point. You could pull it, pull it into something like Final Cut and have both images going at the same time and superimpose one over the other and blend between them and create a, a completely cool uh, presentation. And then of course, I always appreciate it if you like and subscribe if you find this information useful to you. And that helps me create new content and more fun stuff for you to take a look at. So live streaming Ecamm plus your drone, it can be done and it can look really cool. All right, until next time, take care.